Hello everyone, this is Just a Dad. Today I'm going to do a detailed review on this Keurig K Duo Plus. So this coffee maker sells for about $200. I was able to find this on Facebook Marketplace for about $80. This looks like a really nice coffee maker and K-cup single serve coffee maker. So you'll see you've got a stainless steel uh, cafe or coffee pot like I like to call it. It does not have a warming plate, so they're going to use this double wall insulated to keep the coffee warm. It's got this thing that slides out the front. It does have a reusable filter. I don't like to use it. I like to use basket style filters. So this takes an 8 to 12 cup basket style filter. And it just fits in there like that. But I do like this. So this filter basket comes out. It's got that plunger on the bottom so that you can take your coffee pot out and grab a quick cup of coffee if you want. But this seems really well built. So Walmart sells a K-Duo for about $90 and the filter basket seems really um, not very well made and kind of easily to break. But this is on some really nice tracks. You know, it seems like they made it to last. I've done a detailed review on the one from Walmart, but this is a little more, this is, this is twice as expensive, expensive as that one. This one's got a really nice display. It's got a clock. It's got a program. It's got a power button. Um, we can program this thing to come on in the morning. So this is kind of like a normal coffee maker. Um, I can program it to come on in the morning. If I've got my coffee grounds in there and my water, um, I can program this to come on at, say, 5 o'clock in the morning, and I'll have a pot of coffee sitting there ready to go. So it's a little, you know, when I first looked at this online, I was like, well, how is it a duo? But it's kind of hidden, this coffee. Uh, so this is where you would put do a coffee pot. And then in the back here, this is where the K-cups go. So this is a little different. You're just going to put the, you know, it looks kind of the same, but it's kind of hidden a little bit, you know. You gotta put the K-cup down in there and then you're gonna close this lid and it's gonna, there's your needle, it's gonna pierce the top. So see there we've got it. It pierced the top and pierced the bottom. But it's kind of hidden here in the back. Normally this is kind of up here in the front or something, but this thing looks really nice. So again, the main benefits of this, you're gonna be able to do K, so if somebody wants to do K-cups, or if somebody wants to do like a full pot of coffee, but you could do, um, even with the pot of coffee, it's a 12 cup uh, coffee pot, but I can select anywhere from 12, 10, eight, or six when I wanna do, so I can do anywhere in between. I don't have to do a full coffee pot. I can do anywhere along here that I want. I really like the water reservoir. So the K Supreme kind of has this same water reservoir it does have water filtration, so I can, I can filter the water with a carbon filter. Now, I don't have the carbon filter installed, but you press these two, uh, these two ears, and it comes out the bottom, and that's how you replace the water filter. And when you put it on, make sure you, if you don't kind of like snap it on, it'll float in there. So make sure you snap it on. This is not dishwasher safe. They say hand wash this. Almost everything on here is, is hand wash only, they say. But I just really, the water reservoir to me is a selling point. Um, it's very, very nice. It's one of the nicest water reservoirs. It's easy to hand, it's got a nice handle, easy to fill up. You know, it's easy to put on. I really like that water reservoir. So this is another Keurig machine. And sometimes the water reservoirs are these kind of like plastic things. And the K-Duo one from Walmart kind of has one like this, and it's kind of awkward to lift up. I mean, you can fill it up with another container, but the water reservoir is a lot different on the cheaper model. Let's go over dimensions. So about 12 inches front to back. So it's only about 13 and a half inches tall, but with the lid, about 18. It's going to fit uh, really nice under a standard kitchen cabinet. St standard kitchen cabinet is about 19, so it'll fit fine. And side to side is about eight, eight and a half inches. So the cord's a three prong cord and it's three feet long. That's a really nice cord. It's really heavy duty. And to plug it in, you just got to plug it in like this. 
Okay, so one of the main uh, selling features is this water reservoir. You can reposition it. Um, see how I've got it coming out the right side? I can come have it come out the, the left side, or I can have it come out the back, and I'm going to show you how to do that. So I've got the unit upside down, but it's a good time to show you. So your coffee, that's your coffee filter basket. That's where the coffee's going to come out. When you do a K-cup, it's got this other little... Um, nozzle that's where the k-cup water is going to come out so two different areas where the water comes out depending on what you're brewing but it's got nice instructions here on how to um, do this mainly you got to you're going to get these little tap you're going to get these things out of the way first okay so these can be a little tricky but you, if you push this tab in it should pull straight up one was kind of hard and the other one wasn't and then you can pull that up. Now I can position this either on this side or on this side. This is a lot like a K-Supreme. But here's the trick. So this is not removable. It's got a hose that is attached here. And we don't want to disconnect that hose. Now we're going to have to slide it out this way. Again, it's just enough. that we're, There's a plastic hose that's going to stay connected in here. But we press this. And then we've got to slide this whole piece out and then it can lift up, but it's not going to lift up tremendously far. So see, there's that hose. We don't want to damage that hose. We, it's going to stay connected. And all you do is you're just going to simply rotate this around. You're going to rotate this around and you can put it either here or here. Okay. So I rotated it around. You got to be really careful. Don't pull on that hose a bunch. And then you're going to slide it into the track. This has got to slide in and snap. And now it's locked in. Now the cord, since it, you're going to have to route this cord to come out the back. So here's my water reservoir, and it's going to be routed there. And then I'm just going to put these two things back in. And they just snap in. This is locked. You, you want to make sure that's down. It's all the way there. snap that in so here I've got the water reservoir coming out the back and now it is like super slim it's, it's, it's longer but it's definitely a lot slimmer and then I could even put the water reservoir here on the left so depending on if you're left-handed right-handed you know depending on how your kitchen cabinets are set up that's a really nice feature to be able to move that reservoir around so let's look at the water reservoir. It's got some marks on it. So if you're going to do a full pot of coffee, make sure you've got it filled up to the 12 mark. There's 10, 8, 6. The minimum amount is right there. So that's kind of nice having those marks on there. But again, that I really like being able to fill this up. Okay, so I've got my water filled up to the max. I, got, I like that nice carrying handle. I like my reservoir on the side. It's just a little bit easier to put it on. And there you go. The water reservoir is installed. So this does has a this has a really nice drip tray. Again, like the other K duos, um, this is a warming plate. And again, this is not this is stainless steel, so they're not going to have a warming plate. They're using the coffee pot to keep the coffee warm. So this can be this can be cleaned up, but it holds. If it, you do an accidental uh, K cup, it holds enough for that. But you've got to have the drip tray for this, for the coffee to work, you've got to have the drip tray installed. Because see that little thing? That little thing has to push up on that thing that's sticking down to let the coffee come out. So make sure you've got the drip tray installed when you want to do coffee. Now, if you want to do a K-cup, you know, you, you can definitely leave the drip tray. But if you've got a really tall travel mug, it goes up to 8 inches, it says. Eight inches is what you can get in there, but you are limited a little bit by that. You know, as long as your, your travel mug's not really wide, because it has to fit between these two things. It has to about three and a half inches. So this is my tallest travel mug, and it's never fit underneath a Keurig until this one. It just fits underneath there. Yeah, and this travel mug's right at eight inches. So let's talk a little bit more. It's got some, the coffee pot's got some holes where the, where the coffee's going to go down into the coffee pot. Now it's held on. It's just screwed on. 
and you got to turn this quite a bit ways to get it to come undone so there's the stainless steel coffee maker or the coffee pot inside there that's going to hold 12 cups here's this the water does so it does go down into the bottom that kind of helps stir things up if the water if the brewed coffee is going into the bottom it's going to kind of get it all stirred up for you that's nice i've seen that on some really expensive coffee makers so it's got this arrow um, i don't find that arrow to be too useful because it's got this x but it really don't line it up with the x the arrow really has to start kind of over here and then it's a it's a pretty long thread in my opinion but the arrow does have to end up where it pours so i think i guess that's what the arrow is for um so then you can then it'll be able to pour out and it's held on there really good again up here so we've got this power button we have to turn it on um if you lose power for more than about a minute um the machine's going to lose its time so you've got to set the time with this hour and this minute button right here be careful if you accidentally hit these you're going to change the time so when you first turn it on it's cycling back and forth so it says do you want to do the coffee pot or do you want to do a k-cup so if we press one of these buttons first that doesn't start the brew process but i press it and now it says do you want to do a strong brew and what's how many cups do you want to do let's say i want to do 12. now i've got to press the brew button right here that'll start the brew process and then that lights this light flashes the whole time that it's brewing and since this is a you can't see the inside of the coffee maker it's kind of hard to tell when it's done that light goes out so this half circle light that's flashing that light will go out whenever it stops brewing and again the displays really not, i really like these displays um say i change it over to the uh, k cup side the ounce is displayed so then i say eight ounces so then the eight ounce lights up so say i want to go back to the cup it goes to cups so it's kind of telling you hey how many cups do you want and then how many ounces do you want and again when you're on the k cup side this is pretty standard it's got six eight ten and twelve most coffees are brewed around eight when you're using the k cup and it does have the auto feature so if we want to program this thing to come on in the morning that's how we do it i'm going to show you how to do that too and so another nice feature is this, this strong button. So I can do a strong brew on the K-cup side and on the coffee pot. So I can make a whole coffee pot with the strong brew. And what that does is it just brews it a, a little bit of a slower brew process to give it more of a bold, stronger flavor. Now it does, I think it does taste a little bit different, but it does take a little bit longer. You end up with the same temperature of coffee when you're done but it does taste a little different. So let's start with the K-cup side first. I've got my coffee cup down here. Now again, you're gonna to wanna to make sure it's back just a little bit because that comes out in a different location. I'm gonna press the coffee button, the K-cup button. I'm gonna lift the lid. I'm gonna put my K-cup in. I let the machine do all the work. Now I close it, it pierces everything. This, this works really nice, really easy to work. Again, I'm going to press, the, I got the K-cup button press. I'm going to do eight ounce. Now I've got to press this brew button. And see how that light is on now? That tells me that it's brewing. So it's a relatively quiet machine and it's fast. You know, this thing started brewing in, in less than about 10, 15 seconds. So that's a really quick cup of coffee. Let's see if the machine is loud. I don't get that hot water tank noise there it is there but it's not super loud some Keurigs that when it's boiling that water inside there it's super loud 
This one's not very loud at all. So let's check the temperature of this. Yeah, 155. It cools off really quick, so it's probably about yeah 165. That's a really hot cup of coffee. Now, I'm going off past experience. I've tried this. It tastes really good. It smells good. You know, these cure eggs, um, and this one's no exception. Most cure eggs I've tested, the eight ounce setting with a K cup, with, any, with a standard um, coffee K cup, tastes really good. You don't get a lot of coffee out of it. You can see eight ounces is not a lot. This is a little bit bigger coffee mug than normal, but it does taste, these cure eggs, it does taste really good. I'm very impressed, and I, I love the how much um, variety you can get with a K-Cup. So now let's go get the K-Cup out. We're just going to lift this up. It kind of snaps open. Now, this is a little trickier getting the K-Cup out because of this needle. This is a pretty sharp needle, and it's hot. And I've noticed you got to get your hand in here a little bit closer to that needle than normal. But it pulls right out. It's not stuck in there or anything. And there's the K-Cup. Normally this is kind of out here a little more accessible. So you just got to be a little more careful and not get poked by that needle. So if you're new to my channel, um, I like to cut all my Keurig K-Cups open. When I'm doing a review on a Keurig machine, I like to see how they're doing. So it poked the hole in the top. It shot the hot water and hot steam in the top. And then your brewed coffee comes out the bottom needle. So here we have the bottom of the coffee. It's got a really nice paper filter. Now, paper filters are good for K-cups because it prevents sediment in your coffee. Now we'll cut the top open. Okay, I've got the top open. Check out my other YouTube video channel on how to recycle because um, you can reuse these coffee grounds like on your garden or in your yard or something. So K-cups hold about two tablespoons of coffee grounds. And that looks like it did a really good job with the coffee grounds. Okay, so since I brewed a cup of coffee, I'm going to have to fill my reservoir back up to the max line because I'm going to do a 12 cup coffee make coffee pot now. Okay, so now I'm going to use coffee grounds. So this is like a standard coffee maker. It just takes ground coffee that you would use in a like a percolator coffee maker. It's ground to a medium grind. And again, I'm going to use a paper filter, but it does come with a reusable filter. I just find with the reusable filters... Um, you get sediment in the bottom of your coffee. Now, I don't know if sediment's good or bad for you, but in the bottom of your coffee cup, you will get some really, really fine coffee grounds. So let's open this up. We can leave this installed. We can take it out whenever we want to clean it. But we're going to leave it installed to put the coffee in. Put your filter in. Make sure it's kind of hugging the walls. Now, it does stick up above. That's okay. Because um, it, it fits in there just fine. I was kind of worried at first when it stuck above the filter basket. Normally you don't see them sticking above the filter basket, but that's okay. And this has a nice place for it to sit. It won't kind of sit off to the side. Make sure it sits and it'll kind of go flush. You won't be able to close it if you don't get it right because it's got a cut out there for it. And make sure it snaps. So the instruction manual says one tablespoon per cup that you're going to brew. I'm going to do 12 cups so I'm going to put 12 tablespoons. It says if you want it a little stronger, you can go up to 15 tablespoons, but that's the maximum amount. But I'm going to do just 12. So one, two. Okay, I've got my 12 tablespoons in. It looks, looks like a lot of coffee. And then you just close this. Make sure it snaps. Make sure you got your coffee pot. And make sure it's empty. I just saw a comment from a viewer that got a different coffee maker who had a, a stainless steel coffee pot and he had forgotten that there was coffee in here. If you've got any water in here at all or anything, it's going to overflow when you do the full 12 cups and he had kind of a mess. So just be careful. That's the one thing about these stainless steel cafes is you can't see inside them. So I've got mine. Mine is empty. We're going to come up here now. Now this thing does power off after five minutes. It can do that because it doesn't have a warming plate. So after five minutes, it just powers itself off. So we just gotta hit the power button. Again, these are gonna alternate, saying which one do you want? I want the coffee pot. And I'm gonna do the full 12. I'm gonna hit the 12. 
I still have to hit this brew button. So one of the first things you'll hear is kind of a pump running. So the pump is kind of sucking down this water. It's going to start heating it up and it's going to start brewing it. Now don't open this while it's brewing. And again, the only way you know that it's done is this light's going to go out when it's done brewing because you really can't see inside it. But it does have pause brewing. So say it's been brewing for a little bit and I want to grab a quick cup of coffee, I can pull this out and that plunger will stop the water from the coffee from coming out because of this and then just put it back. I just don't want to leave the coffee pot out too long. It will start to overflow inside that basket. And we're going to time this and check a temperature when we're done. So the coffee maker is really quiet when it's brewing coffee. Um, once in a while you'll hear that pump, once in a while you hear the water kind of boiling a little bit, but it's a very quiet coffee maker. It's got kind of just a steady process of, you can hear the pump working, you know, it's sucking the water down now, it's heating it, and it's, it's brewing it over the coffee grounds. Okay, so that took about nine minutes. That's a little faster than a normal... A coffee maker. A normal coffee maker is about a cup a minute. So 12 cups took nine minutes with this. My ad water light comes on because it used all the water. Let's open this up. Let's see how it did. So it did really well with the coffee grounds. I didn't, the main thing is no overflow. So the coffee grounds come up really, you know, pretty high in the filter, but they don't go over. You'll know right away if they start to go over. So we're not going to have any coffee grounds in our coffee. But it did a really good job with the coffee grounds. Okay, so let's get our coffee pot out. Let's see how it pours. Yeah, it pours really nice. Let's see what temperature we're at. 170. That's a really hot cup of coffee. Now, I know this, this coffee is really hot right now. But I have done some taste tests, and I've, especially with Folgers, I've got some Folgers K cups. So I've got some Folgers K cups that are the same um, coffee as coffee grounds. And what I've noticed is so now the coffee pot side compared to the K cup side, now I think they taste really, really close. I do give the coffee pot um, a little higher rating because it tastes a little. A little smoother um, I'm not sure if that makes any sense or not but it it does taste a little bit better out of the coffee pot side but that does that is not to say that the K cup side is any less you know I've, I've found these K cups taste really good but when, when you can directly compare the two you can taste a little smoother taste with the coffee pot side and again I can tell it stopped brewing as that light went off and the coffee pot light went off so when those lights go off you know it's completely done so cleanup is very simple. You pull the tray out. I can lift this up now. I can take this, this is a really nice handle. I can take this over to the trash can now, dump it out. So here it is after I've, I've dumped it out. Now, it does have a big warning that all this stuff is not dishwasher safe. That's a little unusual, but, so you're gonna to wanna to wash these by hand. So it doesn't make a big mess down in here. Now it does look, I do see something interesting. So I'm not gonna wanna do a K-cup with this thing open. Looks like there's a part of that nozzles down in there. So when I do a K-cup, I don't want this open. I wanna make sure this is closed. So another thing that's a little unusual. So normally coffee makers, like standard percolator coffee makers, when they have a glass cafe, they have a warming plate, but the glass ones are 12 cups. And when they put a, um, a stainless steel one in place of the glass one they usually bump it down to about 10 cups this even though this is a stainless steel double wall cafe it's still 12 cups that's a little unusual you don't normally see the stainless steel um, coffee pots at 12 cups normally they're 10 cups so even though we did a full 12 pot there's still some water left in the bottom of the reservoir but it's below the minimum line so you're not gonna be able to brew anything else till you add more water so here's cleanup. Again, they don't, re they don't uh, recommend putting any of this in the dishwasher. 
You're going to have to use a brush inside here. This one's a little trickier. Um, it doesn't really come apart, but it's got some in internal parts there. It's going to be a little tricky to wash. This is very simple to wash. Again, there's that plunger down there. It's got a little a, a plastic washer that keeps that on with a spring. Again, inside the reservoir, you're going to want to clean this out every once in a while. And there's the top. Even the top's got a hand wash only. So I'm going to show you some more things in the video. I'm going to show you how to set the time and set the program here. And then I'm also going to do a strong brew. So if you want to stay and watch, I'm going to do a strong brew. I'm going to show you how long it takes. I'm going to do strong brew with cake upside too and see how long it takes. So let's go over how to set the time. So originally I told you that if you accidentally hit these buttons, that's when it was flashing, it changes the time. But in order to change the time, in order to change the time, we've got to hold the hour button. Then the numbers are going to start flashing. Once they start flashing, now I can change it. Now it does have an AM and a PM, and this is the minute, hours and minutes. So it's 10, 10, 15 AM. So it does not have an AM light. So if you want AM, make sure the PM light's not. Now this will stop flashing after a while. And that way it'll memorize it. But what I've found is if you hit the power button, that also tells it to memorize it. So now it's stopped flashing. That's the time it's set. And if I accidentally hit these, it's not going to. Okay, so now let's say we want to set this to come on at 5 o'clock in the morning. First, we need to turn the power on. Here's our auto button. We're going we're gonna to hit our auto button. Now you've got to set the time you want it to come on. And again, there's no AM, so make sure you it's not PM showing. So we want this to come on at 6. Give yourself about 15 minutes. 6.15 AM is when we want it to come on. Now it says we've got to hit this, this, this uh, flashing button, the brew button. Hit it once. Now you're going to select what size you want. It will only do the coffee pot side, so don't select the K-cup side. So if you want 6 cups, 8 cups, 10 cups, or if you want a full 12 cups, you're going to select that. If you want strong brew, you're going to turn strong brew on or off. So let's turn it on. 12 cups. So the strong light's lit. 12 cups. we got to do one more step. Press the brew button one more time. Now if you'll see, the auto light is on and the auto thing's on. And we got a little timer up there in the top. That lets us know that this will start and it's going to brew a pot at 12. So it keeps all those settings lit. That way when you go to bed at night, you'll know that it's going to start in the morning. Now don't come up here and hit anything. It will turn it off. You know, if I hit the K-cut button, this starts flashing and that turned it off. So if I want to cancel that, say I'm going to sleep in in the morning, just hit the auto button. It turns the auto off and we're back to we can make a brew. So this does have a high altitude setting. To, you'll get a little mountain icon. We're going we're gonna to hit the, the strong and the 8 ounce at the same time for 3 seconds. So make sure the unit's not on. So if it's on, you can't adjust the setting. So make sure the unit's off. You're going to hit the strong and the 8 ounce at the same time with the unit off. Hold it for 3 seconds. Okay, when I held it for three seconds, these lights flashed, and then I got a little mountain icon. Now, if I want to turn that off, I'm just going to do the opposite again. Hold it again, and that'll turn that little mountain icon off. So I held them again for three seconds. They flashed, and the little mountain icon went off. That's like if you live in Denver. So let's do a K-cup with a strong setting. So we're going to put our K-cup in again. Close this. Turn the unit on. I'm going to hit the strong button. Or well, first, I got to hit the K cup. Strong. And let's do eight ounce. And then I got to hit the brew button. So here's the the strong setting. So you'll notice the stream is a little bit like weaker, and you do get a little bit of splashing when you do the strong setting. When you do the normal setting, the stream is more consistent. 
and you don't get quite as near as splashing, but you are you do get a couple splashes around. So on average, it was probably about 10 seconds longer. It's still really, really fast. But they do give you that option for a strong setting with the K-Cup. Okay, so now let's do a strong setting with the coffee grounds. I've got my filter in, got my coffee grounds in. I'm just gonna shut this. I'm gonna select coffee pot. I'm gonna hit strong now. The strong light is lit, 12, and brew. So we'll time it and see how long that takes. So I meant to show you, but when it does a strong K-cup, it brews it at the same temperature that it does a normal one. It just takes a little bit longer, but same temperature. So again, one more thing to keep in mind. So this, again, this is not a warming plate. Now these stainless steel cafes do keep the coffee warm for a while, but it's not gonna be the same as a warming plate. You are gonna get some cooling inside of here after a while. So when you do your program in the morning, I would try to get it as close as possible to when you actually want to drink it. Now, when you got a warming plate, you know, you can be 15, 20 minutes ahead of time and you'll be fine. But definitely get it a lot closer to the time you're ready to drink it. Okay, so it finished. The add water light came on. You get a little bit of like a puff of, of steam you can kind of hear towards the end. And that took right at 15 minutes. So right at 15 minutes, so about five to six minutes longer on the bold setting. So my lights went out, but when I open this up, I do have a little bit of water that has to drain out of there yet, but it did a pretty good job. So again, It brews it at the same temperature. Now, I'm not a coffee expert by no means, um, but on the strong brew, not so much with the K-cup. Now, with the, with the coffee grounds, I do tend to notice a little bit of a stronger taste, if that's possible. Um, it does taste a little more bolder. It might even be just a little bit bitter. I'm not quite sure. But again, I'm not a coffee expert, but you do taste a little bit different. Some coffee makers, I don't notice that when I do the bold setting. Um, in K-Cups, it's kind of hard to. But when you're brewing coffee actually five minutes longer, um, you can tell a little bit of a difference. So again, no real obvious signs that the machine is done other than the lights go out here. You can sort of tell the water's all gone, but you really can't see in what's inside the coffee pot. This was one of my longer videos. I should have maybe broke it up um, a little bit. But this is a really nice machine. Um, I really like it. It, Other than if you don't want a warming plate. You know, I really like the display. It looks really nice. And it is a, you have to look down. There is no display on the front or anything. And the controls are all on top. So you got to kind of see them. And this is a little hidden here in the back. You know, at first I didn't really understand this coffee machine because it was so well designed and hidden. Um, when you see pictures of it from the front, you're like, they say, oh, it's a dual K-Duo. It does K-Cups and Coffee Maker. I'm like, well, how? I don't see any of it, but it does make a lot of sense. It was very well designed. It seems like when you spend a little more money with a Keurig, they're quieter, they're a little quicker, and they're a little easier to work with. Um, I've got the K-Compact, the which is a $60 Keurig machine. It works fine, but it's a little louder. The reservoir's not as nice. You know, this, these are nice machines, but this is also $200, which is pretty expensive for a Keurig machine. Do I, do I feel like I'm getting my money's worth? Yeah, um, but these are, it's nice to find these used. Somebody that took care of them. And um, so I'm going to do some more videos on this. I'm going to do how to, a separate video just on how to program it. So if somebody's looking how to program it, I'm going to do a descale. I'm going to descale this with the... Um, Keurig solution and with white vinegar. I'm also going to show you how to clean the needles in the needle basket. Um, if your K-cup machine is not working, um, it could be simply just there's no water coming out when you press the K-cup button. It could be just a clogged needle. 
If you got any questions on this machine, leave them in the comments down below. Also, I don't, I don't mind feedback on my reviews. Um, if this video was too long and should have been broken up into strong brew compared to that, I could have done separate videos on that. Leave them in the comments down below. I'm open to, um, to comments on my videos. I'm, I'm wanting to help people. So I buy this Keurig and Keurigs and coffee machines were very hard for me to understand when I first started drinking coffee about three years ago. And I'm just wanting to bring people on my journey, um, coming from a point of not really understanding coffee makers and coffee in general. And uh, it's kind of hard to understand. And that's why I've kind of started this channel to help people with my videos, with coffee makers. I also do reviews on other things, but it's mainly about coffee makers. And I've kind of concentrated on the Keurig machines a little bit. Um, they kind of intrigue me. Um, they're kind of, they look nice. At first, I didn't think the K-Cups were did that good a cup of coffee but once you understand them um they actually do make a pretty good cup of coffee check out my other videos i've got all kinds of videos on different uh, k cups different keurig machines again if you could please like and subscribe and thank you for watching